So today, we're working on this. Stay tuned. Hi guys, so for those of you who don't know, my name is Michael and I am the woodworker for MK Designs and I've actually had this video in the can, so to speak, <laughs> for quite a while. I finished it probably mid-summer, August sometime, somewhere in there. Uh, I think it was the end of July, 1st of August, if I remember correctly. And I did film it all, but I, I've been going back and forth on whether or not I was actually going to put it out there. But I decided, since the same customer came to me and asked me for another piece and I'm gonna film that I should probably put this one out there as well so yeah it's a blanket chest in case you couldn't tell from the bit from the pictures uh, with a hidden drawer on the bottom uh, they, they wanted <laughs> they came to me and they said they wanted uh, this this style to show me a couple pictures and stuff like that and but they wanted it similar to how their nightstands were it's the same customer that, that ordered the nightstands from me if you haven't watched that video, you should go back and check it. Uh, just so you up to speed a little bit on what I'm actually talking about. Um, so yeah, they came back to me and they said they wanted a blanket chest with a, a drawer or a false bottom or something along those lines. So this is what we came up with. So what it is, is actually a mixture of green and green furniture. And if you don't know what that is, Mark Spagnuolo has a great video out there about green and green furniture. And you can just, you can look it up. It originally started in San Francisco. I believe San Francisco. Uh, it was two brothers. They purchased a bunch of houses and they had this style of furniture. And the signature of all these pieces is the finger joints on the corners of the pieces, especially the blanket chest, and then the ebony plugs covering the screw holes from where they, they were attached. Um, but green and green furniture is typically made with mahogany lumber. But my customer wanted white oak with the gunstock stain on it, um, like similar to the nightstands. So, yeah, I call this kind of a green and green mission style blanket chest. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, that's the whole story behind it. That's why I, I designed it, that's why I, I built it. And, yeah, so okay, and now here's the video, and let's get started. Okay, so as always with any project, the very first thing you need to do once you have all your lumber selected and you know what pieces you're going to be cutting out of what boards, you need to measure the pieces so you can get them cut to rough length and rough shape. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking the plans that I drew up and the measurement sheet that I've got and I'm making sure I can get all the pieces fit where I want them to fit and then I'll start cutting them to rough shape. Okay, so the first thing that needs to be done is take them to the miter saw and cut them to the rough length. And once you have that, you should have a glorious pile of lumber that looks like this. And as you can see, I, I chose eight quarters for most of this. I'm going to wind up resawing them in half and trying to get a little bit of book matching going on. So I actually kind of lucked out on these pieces that I got. They were perfectly straight. I only had to join a couple of them to get one side flat. So instead of running over the joiner and through the planer just yet, I am going to go ahead and run them, take them with a the table saw and cut them to rough width. And then I'll resaw and I'll go from there. Okay, so it should be known that the trick to getting a good resaw on your with your bandsaw is number one the setup make sure you have your blade set up exactly right and it will come out perfect every time and once I've resawed all the pieces then I will take them to the joiner and the planer now again most of these were already flat so all I had to do was take them to the planer and this serves two purposes one it cleans them up from the resaw from the saw marks from the bandsaw and two it gets them to the thickness that I'm wanting now keep in mind that I'm only taken with the joiner and the planer as I'm getting ready to use them. 
because if I do them ahead of time, then that, that and they sit around for a day or two while I'm working on other things, that can actually cause them to warp and bow on me, and I don't want that. So taking them over to the joiner and the planer as I'm working with them, that helps eliminate that. And now that I got them jointed and planed down to thickness, I can cut them to exact width. And this is one of the reasons why I cut them to rough width earlier, so that I could use the feather board and it would make this a little bit quicker because they're all the same width at this point. And I can just use the feather board, run them through and get them cut to exact width. So this project is the exact reason that I built my crosscut sled extension. If you haven't seen that video, you should go check it out. It's pretty interesting. Um, but I, I hadn't built it at this point and my crosscut sled is not wide enough to get the measurement that I need to be able to cut these pieces to exact length. So I put a sacrificial board on the front and then clamped a block to it and made a mark on one of the, one of the parts and then placed the block where I needed it to to be able to do repeatable cuts on my crosscut sled that I w otherwise wouldn't be able to do on it. And as you can see, the first thing I'm doing is I'm doing a clean cut to make sure I got a clean edge and then taking that, pushing it up against the block and then cutting them to length. So the first parts I'm working on are all the parts for the case. And yes, I know this one board is a little wonky, but that's okay because I've got another one going wonky the other way. And the reason I didn't joint these, even though they're a little wonky, <laughs> is because my joiner is just too small. So what I did was I was able to get one of them flipped around and I'm going to clamp them together using dominoes and glue them, edge glue them using the dominoes and that'll help pull it back into place. And I know a lot of people are going to say no, that doesn't really work, but actually I've had really good luck with it. It works really well. So while those are in clamps and the glue is drying, I am going to start working on the parts for the base and the hidden drawer. And it was at this point that I decided to stop and build the attachment for my crosscut sled. And here it is in use for the first time. So the first thing I need to do is I need to make the finger joints for the base sides and the drawer front. So here I am, I'm going to mark it, mark off on it, and then I'm going to cut it out with a Japanese saw and clean it up with a chisel. Now you may be asking why I have the piece of plywood clamped at the top. Well, that piece of plywood actually makes it really easy to keep my saw in line where I need it to go and not wander off from that line. And I know this is the wrong way to do this and there's a much easier way to do it if I come from underneath it. But in order to get the right camera angle, this is what I want to have to do, and yes, it's very difficult. Now with those cut, I'm going to cut the dado on the back piece of the base that's going to actually support the framework that's going to support the drawer. And yeah, I know you can see the square mortars up there. We'll get to those in a little bit. And these dados are on the base sides. and even more datos. Actually, these are rabbits, but you get the point. Now, I'm about ready to start assembly on the base, and before I do that, I wanna go ahead and get the roundovers done. So you can see I've marked with white chalk everywhere that I wanna round over, and that way I don't put it where I don't want it, and I make sure it goes where I do want it. So now, obviously, the router can't get the corners, and one of the distinctions of green and green furniture is it's all softened, it's all rounded over. Um, so because the router can't get this, I'm going to take a wood file and sandpaper and I'm going to basically shape it by hand. Okay, 
Okay, so if you're a member of the Wood Whisperer Guild and you build Mark's blanket chest, you'll notice this little trick here. It's very similar. I just took some MDF and glued it up in the shape that I wanted then rounded the corners over. And that way I can lay it on my piece and trace it out. Then I'll take my jigsaw and do a rough cut on it. I'm not trying to get in, in close to the line. I'm just trying to get close enough to where I can then take my router with a flush trim bit and run it along the pattern and cut it out with the router. And the way it's set up is on one side you've got one edge of the board and on the other side you've got the other edge of the board so you've got one jig for both sets of fingers that you need. So once i then done with the router I will take a flush trim saw and I will cut out the part in the corner that the router couldn't get to and I'll just get as close as I can with the flush trim saw and then I will clean it up with a sharp chisel. Okay, so before I assemble the case, I actually want to cut the dado for the bottom. And the way I'm going to do this to keep from tearing it out and make sure I don't go past my line is I'm going to do a plunge cut at both ends at the full depth. And then I'm going to take shallow passes from one cut to the next cut. And that way I make sure that I'm in my lines. And before someone calls me out on it, I know that I said I don't mill the pieces until I'm ready to work with them, and that's true. I'm not, I don't mill them until I'm ready to work with them. I'm going to assemble the case and the base in the same day. This is the reason I did things the order that I did, so that I could get both assembled in the same day and make sure everything is going to line up the way that I want it to line up. And then that way, after I have the base fully assembled and the drawer installed, I can I will have the deck glued up and that'll be set and ready to go and I can just assemble the whole thing and I'm ready for to start finishing it. And in case you couldn't tell after I cut my dado I cleaned the corners with the chisel just to get them square. And I did the exact same thing on the sides of the case, except I went through, but in order to prevent the tear out, I still did the plunge cut on both ends. Okay, so now it's time to talk about those square mortises. And again, if you're a member of the guild and you watched the video for Mark's Blanket Chest, he goes really in depth on how to do this. I'm just gonna go over the highlights real quick. So basically, I'm gonna mark the center of where I want the, want, the, want it to go and I'm going to draw the little square using a template and then I'm going to use a hole punch from Lee Valley to actually punch the square hole and you, you basically punch it down a little bit then you drill out then you punch down a little more and you drill out and you go down to the depth that you want and that makes your square hole. So once I have the dados cut, then I can take do a dry fit, take a measurement, and get my bottom cut to size. And with my bottom cut to size, I can start assembling the case. And I'm going to run a bead of glue inside the dados and attach the bottom. And then I'm going to put glue on the fingers and attach the sides to the back and the front. And I'm actually going to pre-drill and run screws through the mortises and We'll fill those later with any plugs. With the case assembled and in clamps, I am going to cut the pieces for the deck to length by cutting them at 45 on both ends. And I'll assemble them by putting dominoes in the corners for extra stability, glue, and a strap clamp. So now I can start assembling the base. And the first thing I want to do, because it's going to be really hard to sand this, these areas once I have it assembled, is I'm going to go ahead and do as much of the finished sanding as I can. And I'll just touch up you know, sanding where I need to after it's all assembled. And in case you don't know, my finished sanding, I start with 80 or 100 grit, depending on how rough or how smooth the board is. And in this case, I started with 100 because I'd already pre-sanded it. And 
then I moved up to 150 and occasionally I'll go to 220, but in this case I stopped at 150 and it worked out just fine. Okay, so I assembled the sides and back of the base the same way I did the case. I pushed and put them together, glued and screwed through the square mortise, and then you'll see how I treat that later on. And this, I, now I'm putting the glue in the dado for the support frame that's going to actually support the drawer, and I'm going to attach those parts. And the part that's going to be hidden, this part that you're watching me assemble now, I'm going to use pin nails to help hold it in place. And I'm using blue tape, that way it makes it a little easier to fill the holes after the glue is set. And now with that part assembled, I'm going to go ahead and install the drawer slides for the drawer, and I'm just going to get it in place, pre-drill, and drive the screws in. Okay, so I want to attach the size of the drawer to the front with a um, dovetail, a sliding dovetail joint. So the first step of that is actually creating the groove, or dado, dovetail dado, and then I will cut the other part on the router table. Now the trick to getting this right is you set your fence a little bit, a little bit shy of halfway on the bit and run it run your piece over, test fit it, and then you just move your fence a little bit at a time to adjust it and just kind of sneak up on the fit. Once I have that fit correct, then I will cut the rabbit for the bottom. And after I get the bottom panel cut to size, then I can start assembly. So while I have it in clamps, I'm going to reinforce the back with some dowels. So I'm just going to drill two holes, drive two dowels in with glue, and then flush trim them with a flush trim saw. And once the glue sets, then I will do a dry fit, make sure it fits between the drawer slides the way I want it to, and attach the slides to the drawer itself. So I need to put feet on it to lift it off the floor a little bit so that the drawer has enough room to slide in and out easily without getting caught. And because they're going to be putting it on carpet, I need to lift it up about a quarter of an inch. So I made these little feet here and I'm going to put one in each corner and then I've got a longer one that I'm going to put in the middle behind the drawer to help support the back. The way I made these is I just cut a dado leaving a quarter of an inch on the end here and cutting everything else out. Now it's a little unsafe to actually make this cut this way because as you get to the end the piece is going to want to push down into the blade. So let me show you how I made these things and this is by far the safest way that I have found to be able to do this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've got my data stack in here and it doesn't matter what size you use, just use whatever size you're comfortable with um, because you're not going for a specific size data. And I've got it set to the right height where I want it to cut on about half of the material out, so in this case 3 8 And I put a mark on here which you probably can't see from there, um, at the height of the piece that I want. And I, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my fence over to a quarter of an inch because that's how big I want 
So I'm gonna move it over a quarter inch from this side of the blade to the fence. Because that's how big I want the piece on the bottom to be. I don't want it to be any taller than that. And I'm gonna keep, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the first one and then I'll move the fence over a little bit, cut a little bit more and cut a little, just keep doing that until I reach that line or just past it. And after that, I will take my dado stack out, put my regular blade back in, flip this piece over and cut it off at the length that I want, cutting into the dado. So that's the safest way to do this that I can see. And so we're gonna give it a shot and see what happens. cut then I'm going to attach them with glue and I'm going to run some pin nails into them just to hold them in place until the glue sets. And I'm almost ready for final assembly. I just need to get some cleats set onto the bottom of the case and on the top of the base and get the lock installed and we're good to go. Okay, so the lock that I used is uh, just a magnet cabinet lock and I'll have a link down in the description for the lock that I used and the instructions that come with it are very detailed and very straightforward and you should be able to figure this out fairly easily. Give everything one last quick sanding and start assembly. Okay, so assembly is going to go upside down. I'm going to assemble the deck to the case and then the base to the deck and it makes it makes it a lot easier because it's a lot more accessible that way Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to get started on the lid. I took them to the planer and joiner and miter saw and table saw and got them cut in size and planed down to the thickness. And now I'm going to assemble them. I'm going to edge glue them the same way I did the sides of the case. I'm just going to use dominoes to help with alignment and to give a little bit of extra stability and yeah, that's it. Okay, so while the glue is setting on the lid, yeah, I'm going to start working on the ebony plugs. And this is a trick I actually picked up from William Ang. And basically, I had a block of ebony, and I took, scraped all the wax off using a card scraper. And then I ran it over the joiner and got it cleaned up the rest of the way, and then I cut it to size on the table saw. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to shave off the corner so it fits in your drill. And then you're going to use progressively higher grits of sandpaper on a soft pad to shape and polish the end of the ebony and then you're going to just cut it off and you're going to repeat the process until you have all the plugs that you need and so I started with 150 grit then I went to 220, 320, 400, 600, 800, 1200 and 1500 and you'll see the end result here in just a second. The pad that I'm using is a master router pad from Kincraft Company. They're a lumber company located in Toledo, Ohio. And the easiest way to cut them to size is just make yourself a little jig like this and cut them off and then keep repeating the process until you get all the pieces that you need. And to insert them, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue inside the mortise and tap them in with a rubber mallet and that's it. 
Okay, so now it's time to start finishing. So basically the lid, once I took it out of the clamps, I scraped all the glue off, sanded it down, and did the finish sand on it. The case and everything was ready to go. And I just took my router and did a round over on it, and then I did my finish sanding on the lid. And then the first step in finishing is staining. And so I like to spray my stain. So it's, I'm using an oil-based men wax gunstock color and I know some people are going to say that I'm putting on, putting on way too heavy, but I actually did a few tests and in order to get the color that my customer wanted, I needed to spray it on this thick and then wipe it off. And even if I tried to do it in two thin coats or three thin coats or whatever, um, it didn't come out quite right. So doing this in one thick, thicker coat, not really thick, but thicker coat, allowed me to get the color that, that my customer wanted and it also allowed me to take the rag from the wipe off and actually spread it around so I wound up saving a, a lot of uh, stain this way. So once the stain has had a chance to cure about 48 hours um, then it's time to start lacquering and I'm gonna put on a pre-cat sanding sealer, sand it to 600 and then put on like four coats of pre-cat lacquer. Okay, so once I let the lacquer cure for about 24 hours, then I'm going to install my lid and I'm going to use the torsion hinges from Rockler to install these. And I did. I waited till this point to do it because I wanted to make sure that I got it, everything lined up right after everything was done. And it actually works out really well. I just used some masking tape to tape off so I could mark where I need to drill my holes. And I pre-drilled my holes and I installed the hinges. and. Everything worked out just fine. Once I have the lid installed, then it's time to install, reinstall all the rest of the hardware and put everything together and make sure everything's working and it's ready for delivery. Okay, so that's about it. Um, I wouldn't exactly call this a beginner project, but it's definitely one that a beginner could do if they, you know, followed the steps and they had a support, uh, you know, someone that's done something somewhat like this before to go to and say, hey, I've got this issue, how would I fix this? Or, you know, something along those lines. Uh, a lot of the steps in this, um, they, they, they came from different sources. Um, some of them I came up with on the home, others I, got from other woodworkers that have done this stuff before. Um, it's definitely something that you can do as long as you know how to find the resources for it. Um, I do have plans available on my website for it. And yeah, so until next time guys, happy creating.